Five years ago, we bought this boat, named her Curiosity, and let our curiosity be the driving force behind our thirst for exploration and discovery. Now, we were just a couple of dreamers. We didn't have a lick of experience or a clue as to what we were getting ourselves into. So when I imagined what my work life would look like, I envisioned something like this. But honestly, I have never set my office up out here and probably won't ever again because the sea breeze is silently eating away at every single electronic device out here and it is so bright, I, I literally, I can't see a thing. But we spend a majority of our lives, 30 to 40 hours a week parked behind a screen, writing, editing, filling out various visa and customs paperwork, and yet, we rarely, if ever, show you this side of our lives. So today we're going to take a peek behind the lens, give you an office tour, a look into our gear and our work routine. Because, well, it's not exactly your average office. When we bought the boat, there was two spots we thought would make perfect workspaces, but neither were great. First glance, this looks like a proper desk, but the reality is they didn't actually design this for anybody to legitimately sit here because I am a small person and I barely fit within this zone. Plus, I am in a direct path to the bathroom, so I constantly feel like I'm in the way and I'm down in the hall. I have zero visibility to what's going on in the outside world, which is just kind of a weird place to be when you're on something that's constantly in motion so it's just not a very comfortable or inspiring place to work so i initially tried this spot here but i really feel like i'm in the way and this space is super cramped so it's hard to spread out move my mouse around and all that and then i'm kind of stuck to this tiny stool which is fine for a short period of time but for eight hours or ten hours in a day I really would prefer to be in a proper seat. And sometimes we'll work out here, but it still has the same issue of usually being too bright for anything serious. So this is our office, and it's also our dining room. Sometimes it's a workbench, a theater, but mostly it's just an office. So let me take you on my daily commute. Ten. This is a long one. This isn't actually everything. It is most of it, but there's a couple things that I do keep down here I want to show you. This is where I keep the backup hard drives, the stuff I'm not currently working on. I've got some miscellaneous cables in here and a scanner printer. It's actually the cheapest one we could buy. Actually, it's the only one that would fit in this tiny little space. You'd be surprised how many times we'll get to an island and there's no printer. We're the only printer in the entire island, yet customs will come on board and they'll say, yeah, we need five copies of this and El Zarpe y Documentacion. Si. And immigration needs three copies of it. And before you know it, you're scanning like 20 documents and like making copies copies of all these things and printing them out. So it's surprising how often we need a printer on a boat. So why the salon? Well, it is the most comfortable seat in the boat with the biggest table to spread out on. I've got a fan right here to keep me cool because when I'm working away in the tropics, it is hot. Get a nice breeze going. Most importantly, I can shut all of the blinds around me to make it a little bit darker in here and that makes it easier to see exactly what I'm editing. And did I say most importantly? Well, I got that wrong because most importantly, the bar is right here. Priorities, you know? Okay, let's bust this thing open. I'm gonna start with the peripherals, but I don't wanna get bogged down on them, so I'm gonna go through this quickly. First thing is a mouse. This one is ergonomic, and I think if you're gonna have something in your hand for eight hours a day, you want it to feel good. And also, I always look for the free wheel, which lets me like, rip through a timeline. Next. Headphones. I choose over the ear because they're comfortable if you're gonna wear them for hours and hours a day. Noise canceling, so I can knock out all the ambient noise that's going on. Jason. 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 Yeah. Do you want some coffee? Sure. Okay. Thanks. I'm not really an audiophile. I mean, I kinda am, but these sound good. And next we have an editing deck. 
and it's basically just a bunch of shortcuts for editing video. Little knobbies that make it go faster. And of course, hard drive. An SSD, this one is the fastest one and the smallest one that I could find, for my USB SS10. I think that's what it's called. One thing that I haven't upgraded yet, and it's definitely not compact, is my little stand here. It has a massive fan, which is left over from my old laptops because they used to get super hot. So I needed a fan to help circulate and keep them cool. Because when you're working in the tropics, the humidity, the heat, will just kill a laptop. But I've kept this one because I do like how stable it is and it gets my computer up to a really good angle. So when I'm sitting here working, I can sit up straight and not go like this. Well, that's the plan anyway. And then last but not least, the brains of the operation. Now I'm only gonna say this once because it is a mouthful. This laptop is an AMD Ryzen powered Asus ROG Zephyrus Duo SE 15. <laughs> Asus ROG, no. Duo Zephyrus 15. Yeah, I got it out of order. <laughs> Ryzen powered. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna try one more. X55 1QS. Okay, I can do this. This laptop is an AMD Ryzen powered Asus ROG Zephyrus Duo 15SE GX55 1QS. Whew, and it's loaded with all the goodies. I think I got all that out. <laughs> Nailed that on the first take. This is also where I should remind you that this video is sponsored by AMD and we don't recommend anything we don't personally use and find value in. And this machine is by far the fastest machine I have ever used. And that's because I spec'd it out to the max. If there was a box on the order form, I checked it. Two terabyte SSD RAID, check. 4K color corrected screen, check. Upgrade from Ryzen 7 to Ryzen 9, check. So I spec'd it out because I want this computer to last. I use a lot of different programs, but the two biggest hogs are Adobe Premiere Pro and After Effects. Now I'm gonna hit render. Usage, RAM, the fan is speeding up. The graphics card is going all over. It's in like the boost mode. So yeah, Premiere uses a lot of the computer's resources. Those programs need a fast processor and a ton of memory. But before I get into my workflow, let's talk about this little guy here popping his head up. This is a game changer. And this little screen down here, actually it's a pretty big screen, has turned what is a 15 inch monitor into what is equivalent to a 19 inch monitor. I don't even know, it's way bigger than my 17 inch laptops. This is what my timeline used to look like on my older laptops. But with the second screen, here's how it looks. I can go real big. And not only does it provide me a space that's perfect for my timeline, it opens up this area to these massive fans that suck air down to help keep the processor cool. And the processor is by far the most important part of a laptop. And keeping it cool, especially in the tropics, giving it good airflow, it just makes it run so much more efficient. And that helps save battery, which is important because we live off the grid and we rely on solar power. Okay. That's enough about my little screen. <laughs> Forgot one important piece of kit, my card reader. So after I shoot the videos, I import them using this into Lightroom and I rename them, organize them, and then I bring them into Adobe Premiere where I do a quick string out, which takes me about three to five hours depending on how much video we shot. From there, I watch the string out multiple times and try and get it down to about a 45 minute video. And after that, I access my external SSD and I get my motion graphics, my music, and any sort of extra assets that I need. And if I need to make a graphic, then I'll open up Photoshop. In fact, sometimes I've even had Photoshop, Premiere, After Effects, every program I have open and it just takes it like a boss. I love that. I'll continue working for another 20 or so hours tweaking the audio and doing the final touches like transitions and then I'll hand it over to Nikki for color because, well, that's her job. <laughs> So now when I come in to take over for color corrections, and not just because I'm a control freak, but because Jason is legit colorblind, not fully, but enough that it can be a real serious problem. So when I come in for color corrections, I also bring additional screens with me because even though we have a 4K color corrected screen here, it's really nice to see what it's gonna look like on other devices. And I do that through the link to my ASUS which does only work with certain processors like the AMD Ryzen. Now, the cool thing about this app is that it works with Android and iOS. 
And not only can I just share my screen or extend it, but I can also share the camera. I can make phone calls. And the craziest thing, the thing that really blew my mind is that I can send files from any device to any device and it's fast. And that says something. <laughs> Amazing. Now that I'm all set up here, then I come over to the editing deck, which I also use, but I have a different setup for color corrections. And I make my way through the entire video, the whole timeline, which usually takes me anywhere from like three to five hours, but it really varies depending on how many locations, how many different cameras we use. And of course, if we've added in like underwater footage or a cave or something that gets a little more complicated, then it just keeps getting longer and longer. Once I've made my way through the entire thing, then that's kind of it for me on this portion. I just hand it right back over to Jason. Assuming that Nikki doesn't have a bunch of changes for me, which is rare. I love you, honey. Mm -hmm. But it's rare. <laughs> my job is essentially done. All I have to do is render and then export. After I export everything, I back it up on duplicate hard drives. And then I keep the main one accessible in that one cabinet that I showed you in the beginning. And then I put the secondary duplicate in a storage baggie with a little silica pack get over there and I hide it in a completely different spot on the boat just in case while Jason is waiting in a sea of video I am usually over here writing blog posts coming up with narration titles editing thumbnails and photos for social media and well whatever else because editing is such a big job that well that leaves me with everything else and so our setups are very different because our jobs are very different I also use a mouse because I prefer it. I have a laptop stand, albeit way smaller than Jason's, but in all fairness, my laptops have also been a lot smaller than his, at least up until now. I have an SSD that I use because we do shoot so many photos that I prefer to work off of an external rather than keeping it all on the computer, which uh, of course leaves me with the computer itself. It's an Asus ROG Zephyrus G14, also powered by the AMD Ryzen 9. But for me, I'm always looking for the smallest, lightest, most portable laptop that I can possibly get with the caveat being it still needs to be powerful enough to edit video because in case anything ever happens to Jason's machine, this becomes the backup. And the marine environment is super harsh on electronics and sometimes stuff happens and it totally did while we were in Tonga because Jason's old laptop died, like completely flatlined, nothing left. This just keeps happening and I get no screen. And for three months, this was it. Jason would edit during the day. I would come in at night, do what I needed to do. I'm pretty sure we did not turn it off for three solid months. So this is a beast in 14 inches. And as far as my workflow goes, it's pretty varied because I'm kind of multitasking all over the place. But where I probably spend the most time is editing photos and more specifically trying to find the thumbnail and then come up with the title. It is the bane of my existence. I actually hate it <laughs> because I'm usually trying to toe the line between something that's interesting enough to be clicked on, but not click bait. It just makes me want to stab my eyeballs out. But once I am done with that process, which does admittedly sometimes take me an entire day, um, then we're ready to upload. And sometimes we're lucky enough that we can do that here from the boat, just using cell phone data. And other times there are no bars, then we gotta go and search Wi Fi. There's times we've had to sail to a completely different island to get internet. And other times we just motored into town and rocked up to a bar or coffee shop. Bar and is always our favorite. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and sometimes we just hike up to the top of a hill to see the, uh, the nearest tower, get cell phone reception. Hopefully we'll be able to hear. <laughs> really windy up here. Oh, okay, so. Legitimately, our cell phone signal is just fine here, so we could have uploaded from the boat, no problem. But that isn't always the case, and I cannot tell you how many times we have uploaded videos from places 
exactly like this or underneath a tree. Pretty much anywhere we can get connectivity, we will go. This video is about three gigs and it will take about two hours to upload. And we're here in New Zealand with pretty good connectivity. Um, and that's why battery power is so important for both of us, because nothing is worse. Oh. Again, the 95% somewhere like this. <laughs> oh, battery. Dang. Oh, it's such a gut punch. Oh, so yeah, so both of these AMD powered laptops have, they're very efficient, so they have really good battery life. That's kind of it. Once we get everything uploaded and scheduled, like even for all the social posts and everything else, then the whole process kind of just starts over again. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Actually, we publish at 3 a.m. New Zealand time. Mm -hmm. So we schedule it all, go to sleep, and we wake up in the morning and we're like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Start looking at all the comments and everything else, and then we're off on the next adventure project, whatever the case may be, and filming again so that we can edit towards the end of the week. Yeah. I have a feeling all of this for the non-techie people was probably a lot. For the people who are really techie, they're like, you didn't give us enough. <laughs> So we'll make sure and put together a post with all of our office gear. So if you want more information, then that is where you will find it. So. Next time we see you, well, we don't know where we're going. We're going south or north, so. Next time we see you, we'll be sailing one of those directions, hopefully. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye guys. We're not actually uploading it. No. Anymore. Okay. We can just continue the walk though. We can't leave our computers here because no, the cow's gonna come. Yeah, it's gonna say. <laughs>